Hey everyone, today I'm going to go over a project where we can implement a LiDAR camera fusion to perform a 3D object detection. And we're going to do this on the Kitty data set. So to do this we're going to utilize what, what I like to call a hybrid fusion approach. So let's start with early fusion. Early fusion just fuses data first and then does detections. And late fusion performs detections first and then fuses those detections together. In this project, I'm just going to fuse or detect objects on the camera, fuse LiDAR points into the 2D image space, and then associate the LiDAR points with the each detected object to get depth for each of those detected objects. So the difference between 2D object detection and 3D object detection is in 2D object detection, we're working in pixel space. But in an autonomous vehicle, a pixel space might not be very useful to do things like detect and track objects in the real world, um, associate objects in the real world, and prevent things like crashes and collisions. So with 3D object detection, we can use that information for more autonomous vehicle applications. So to get, we're going to get our data from the Kitty data set. I've already downloaded it and put it in this folder here in the collab environment. And if you want to know where I'm getting this from, I'm just going on the Kitty, Kitty website. I'm going to the raw data, and you need to make an account to log in, but it's free. And to download it in Collab, you just right-click on the one you want, you do copy link, and you can paste it into your into a cell and use the wget command to download it. And, what, and I'm also doing it for the synced and rectified data and the calibration data, and I'm using the jarxf command to unzip it to our environment. So... So basically what synced means, I'll go down here. So the Kitty data set gives us camera information, navigation information, and LiDAR information. And each of these has different update rates. You can see 15 hertz, 100 hertz, and 10 hertz. So what the people who made the Kitty data set did is they synced everything up to the LiDAR. So that means the timestamps are all relative to the LiDAR and they're all about the same. They didn't actually interpolate anything. And according to their investigation into their own data set, they said the error between the sync was at most five milliseconds. So we could interpolate it to be more precise. And if you want to use this for a real, you know, real time vehicle application, I recommend you interpolate it. But for this notebook, we're just going to neglect that. We'll see that it's really not going to be that big of a deal. We're going to make do without it. It's going to be just about the same for this purpose. So. And I'm going to note up here, I do have a utils function that I imported from GitHub. Um, we'll, we'll go over these functions as they come up. Probably not going to go over those in this video. So I've done a basic um, glob to get all of our image data. It's just in PNGs. Um, we see our binary, our, the Velodyne data or the LiDAR data is in binary and the navigation data is in text. And we'll see in this notebook how to go through all these data data, even the binaries. So we'll go over that later. So now let's just go for the basic setup. So this vehicle right here is the vehicle used to collect the kitty data. You see it has cameras, cameras, a Velodyne laser scanner, and the GPS. And this vehicle and autonomous research is usually called the ego vehicle. So and you can notice that we have different coordinate reference frames for all this. And to do the sensor fusion, we're going to need to work with all these coordinate frames. So the main thing to note is that in these camera frames, we have the Z axis is going forward, but in the LiDAR and IMU frames, we have the X axis is going forward and we'll have to do some rotations to work with that. So that's all for this video. We're going to go over the rotations in the next video and I'll see you then.